in the last episode. I wrote to you, Monsieur Monet. At least you got my name right. Alice Oshaday. Claude Monet. The great artist, yes, I know. Hardly great. Oh, you're great. People just haven't seen it yet. Jean, please! I say we start a fire. We paint what we want, we sell what we can. An exhibition of our own. <laughs> oh, dear. This is no ordinary exhibition. You're right. It's a disaster. Go, get out! Please, Monsieur Degas, I... Now! Do you think I should paint like Monet? Dash them off in a blink of an eye. You will not make slanderous comments in the press about my private life! Surrendered your impressionist brush. The colours, lights... This will be my finest painting yet. Say that in the past we have had our disagreements would be an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> but I am enough of a realist, and I hope you are too, to know that if we argue tonight it would create a very bad impression. <laughs> we are here tonight to salute a recipient of the Legion d'honneur, yes. But more important than that, our tower of strength our friend, Edward Manning. Edward Manning. Edward Manning. Thank you, Degas, for those kind words. Naturally, I can't agree with all of them. <laughs> it has always been my ambition not to repeat today what I did yesterday, but to respond constantly to every fresh vision Every new voice. As for the salon, our oh, white brew in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yes, to go. I now have the Legion d'honneur. Would have made my future once. But now, oh, it's too late to make up for 20 years of failure. No, not failure. Never. The one thing you're not is a failure. <laughs> what pleases me more? Far more is to see you here tonight, my friends, my dear, dear friends. Our group was about to go its separate ways. Whether we liked it or not, it wasn't going to be the same again. <sighs> to the future. So, did Manet know what was wrong? His misspent youth. One brothel too many. The disease crept up on him over the years. Manet was there from the beginning. He never described himself as an impressionist, but he was one of us, so much a part of what we did. An impressionist masterpiece. He loved it at the salon. 
Edouard Manet. So, the tide was beginning to turn. <laughs> the tide was still against us. As hard as I swam, the current held me back. I was living in the country with Alice Oshide, the wife of my old patron, Ernest, with their six children and my two boys. Papa, we brought you tea. Claude? I owe over 2,000 francs in household expenses. If I stop to eat now, we all starve tomorrow. I made you tart to town. Now that's bribery. <laughs> I'm going to write to your husband, Alice. I'm going to give him an ultimatum. Lord, no. Either he should pay something towards your keep, or let you go. Tongues are so loose they will wag themselves out. Well, the streets of Paris will be littered with tongues. Maybe I should paint something people will want to buy. I wanted to capture the impression of a moment. I was still at the beginning of my journey. I say beginning. A single life is not long enough to know a single moment. Cezanne was a pioneer, searching for his own truth. His one-man revolution would take Impressionism somewhere very different. His work was so savage and unfinished looking. People were outraged. The critics saved the worst of their venom for him. Paul Cezanne is a genuine impressionist. Each one of his paintings more stupefying than the last. No, I will not have that. Stupefying's pretty tame. They compared one of my nudes to a court. Well, that was fair enough. <laughs> How dare they call me an impressionist? Cezanne. You're worse than Degas. How can you say your style owes nothing to what we've tried? Are to... you blind? You are an inspiration to me, and you... You are Renoir, but... <laughs> but I am doing something completely different. We all are. No! Not like me! Not the best company on a good day. With Cezanne, good days were rare. I heard he didn't even like to be touched. You found the world a hard place to be in. So would you, if you were consistently rejected by a world that was so blind it couldn't even see your work. To try and to fail. So continually. And to be rejected in the end by those you loved the most. He loved Zola very much. He and Emile Zola had grown up together in Aix-en-Provence. The Inseparables, they'd called them. Of course, we know how famous Zola became, one of France's most popular writers. You're not hunting for your supper anymore, Zola. No, we seldom caught anything. Quite the dirty bourgeois. I can't help being a success. Well, you were going to be the painter. And you wrote me verses. Ah! The inseparables. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do in X? Do you still swim? Against the tide, mainly. When the people of X are stuck for a laugh, they ask to see my paintings. Do you let them? <laughs> How are your parents? Still the most disgusting, stinking people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know your secret? The paternal authority spent his life trying to get his accent accepted by the, the snobs of X. Only to have his son and heir father a child with a peasant. He'd, he'd cut off my allowance if he found out. And then we'd be completely reliant on you.
Paul. Morning, Father. Where do you go all the time? Uh, you're away for weeks. Well, I am trying to clarify the relationship between colour and form, Father. Do you think that is a valid occupation for a man approaching 40? At 40, I'd built up a successful business. Your mother and I had two children. Any sales? Oh, no. You're not earning a penny. <laughs> not yet. Well, perhaps... Perhaps you're just not good enough. Perhaps I'm too good. Perhaps I'm a genius. One may die with genius, Paul. One eats with money. Please let me write it off today. You say what? That I love you. And that you love me. It won't change anything. How could he think that he has any hold over you when he doesn't pay a penny towards any of your keep? He's choosing to drink his life away, and if you let him, he will drink ours away too. We have any choices? Well, I married him. I made my choice. I took him as my husband. Well, he isn't behaving I like I won't a divorce husband. him, Claude. You know that. I'm a Catholic. So where does that leave us? Wedged between Oshide and the Church of Rome for the rest of our lives? If I thought things were bad, they were always worse for Cezanne, with his secret mistress and their secret child. I've got so many pawn tickets in my purse, there's no room for any money. That's just as well. I'd love a lemonade. Paul? I'd help if you sold a painting. Paul? Sit still! Father's house, so it's gonna tip over. If it was really like that, all the furniture would slide down one hand. That's the composition. You should tell your father if you think his house is gonna fall down. One gust of wind and your inheritance will be a pile of rubble. What you paint, Paul, it's not what other people see. It's more than that, Hortense. My eye is thinking, too. Well, tell it to stop! I want honesty. Honesty is more important than what you see. So send honesty to the butchers! Paul! myself in better shape. <laughs> Any news? Quite out of touch here. It's been raining again. All this wind and rain. It doesn't make the world look so attractive, does it? I've begun a few outdoor studies. I'm afraid I might not be able to finish them. Oh. Are you in pain? No, no pain. No, I'm, I'm feeling much better. Reassure my friends, will you? The syphilis had advanced, and his leg had been removed below the knee. Never spoke about the operation to anyone. But I saw it in his eyes. Those unfinished paintings he so wanted to return to. And it wasn't just the leg. 
His work was being taken away from him, bit by bit. So much goes unsaid. When will you be back? Depends on how much I paint. What, by next Sunday? I'll write when I get there. It's my birthday. I know. Well, if you're not back for my birthday, I um, might go and spend it with my husband in Paris. Why do you want to spend your birthday with Oshide? I don't want to spend my birthday alone. Please, don't punish me for not behaving like a husband. I would very much like to behave like a husband. That is, you never cease reminding me you are married to somebody else. Sixty francs. I'd, I'd really shake your hand for this, Ola. Oh, and please thank your wife for the bag of rags she sent me. They're always useful in the studio. They really are a good, solid plank. Yes, well, I'll take that in the manner it was met. Why do you stay in Aix? Well, that seems to mean anything. Come to Paris. Make me feel sick. How can you give art a new beginning if you won't move on from where you started? <sighs> you just want me to paint society. I want you to paint the world. At least then you might sell. I'm painting for myself, not to amuse other people. We both used to live in our own shadows, Cezanne. Isn't it about time you stepped out of yours? And do you remember when I first spoke to you at school? Well, you were the only one that would. Speaking to you was banned because you were a hopeless dreamer. If I am a hopeless dreamer now, then... let me work in silence. Don't throw me to the ruffians. Cézanne invited Renoir and myself to visit him in Provence. Oh, with its vivid colours and intense light, it was another world. It's like a fairy tale, Andy, don't you think? Honestly, you won't know what to paint first. Oh, I imagine I will. So bright, so much blue. You'll need plenty of cerulean and ultramarine. Sell them use ultramarine. You can use some of mine. It's quite good quality. It's about the impression that it makes on me, Renoir, not the impression that it makes on you. Suzanne says that he's been working hard. Sounds good. To avoid the admiration of imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds happy. Oh, I don't think happy is on his palate. Mm. So, is this just linseed oil? Yes, yes, it is. You found your suit, Miss Lott. An eminently sensible idea, Suzanne. Well, let's hope no-one dies for the next few months. You could, uh, you put Paul to bed. If I move him, he'll wake up. So, are you going to get involved in any more Impressionist exhibitions? Is it Impressionist anymore? Well, it's hard to know what we are these days. Degas hijacked one, then my dealer had a go. That was a shambles. I know, any more exhibitions like that will end up with a public board of us and the press still against us. Even if I had the money to frame them, I wouldn't send them any of my pictures. Well, I'm sure Hortense would agree. Well, Thomas is only interested in lemonade. Do you have any lemonade? No. Um, no, they don't. No, no. I think I'm coming to the end of Impressionism. Oh, Impressionism. I want something more solid and durable. My own way. Oh, I'll be the only one left. Fed up being out in the cold. Do you want a blanket? Oh, I think one while I was talking figuratively. Oh, well, uh, I'll put another log on the stove anyway. for years. When I last saw him, I took him some peonies, and he straight away started to paint them. It's a 
go. Just when you start to find success. We're all of us successful. Manny was a great success. On the first day I met him. As are you. So this was 1883. 1883 was also the first year we came here. Didn't know how much part of our lives it would become. From the train, I had seen this rambling farmhouse. And we were lucky. The rent was low enough that even we could afford it. Will you allow yourself to enjoy it? Instead of having away all the time? I have to find new subjects. We've got plenty of subjects here. I've told them to put your things in the main bedroom upstairs. And where will you sleep? We'll sleep downstairs. seems very complicated. The trick is to make it simple. Why does it have to go there? Because of the biscuit. To make a picture is to compose. I'm going to astonish Paris with an apple. This arrived yesterday. Do you know who it's for? It's addressed for Madame Cezanne. Uh, must be for Mother. No, no, it's not for Mother. It's from a father to his daughter. So let's piece together what we know. Here is a letter from a Monsieur Fiquet. Monsieur Fiquet is not a man of letters. No. Monsieur Fiquet is a peasant. And his daughter is a peasant girl. Peasant girl. Monsieur Fiquet finishes. Please remember me to the boy. Yes. Paul. He's 11. Perhaps you'd be so good as to say that this gets to its intended reader. Thank you. 
and I shall go away and consider your intended allowance. Do you feel you had much common ground with Cezanne as an impressionist? We both chased nature. He wanted to construct it and make it endure. For me, it was the moment. And just that, chasing the moment that will never come again. Alice and I had our home. I knew she wanted me to stay there with her, but I couldn't. I was traveling, always traveling, trying to get closer to my subject. I was a hunter, not a painter, learning to know my quarry. Some days the sea was so blue, others so green. I couldn't express its intensity, its habits, its passions. Lying in wait for a passing cloud, pouncing on a perfect sky. <laughs> it was a daily battle in which I invariably came off the worst. Painting took me away for weeks at a time. Alice and I were divided by so much. But without her, nothing mattered. Not even painting. The critics call my work the cult of ugliness. Painted by a madman with the shakes, made by loading pistols with paint and firing at the canvas. Well, you're an artist, artist. Manny called me a bricklayer who paints with a trowel. <laughs> I am rolling a rock uphill, Zola. And either I... I keep on rolling it forever, or I, I, I let it roll back on me and crush me. Go on. But the thing that keeps me going is the hope, the belief that one day I will pick up that boulder with my hands and hurl it to the stars. Well, what if posterity isn't the impartial judge we think it is? Hmm. Well, don't say that. Suppose the artist's paradise turns it out to be as non-existent as the Catholics, and that future generations persist on liking pretty, pretty daubing better than real painting. Well, then ask want my paintings. If they're painted well. <laughs> That's like saying they'll be happy to be butchered as long as the cuts are neat. I've started a new novel. It's the 14th in my series about the Rougar Macar family. It's about passion and creation. I'll send you a copy. Right. Where are you going? To paint. Cezanne kept moving not knowing if he would ever reach his destination. Zola did what he did best, writing about what he knew and the people he knew. Father, I'm late, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. 
got my train. There was, there was, a, there was an error in the timetable. Oh. Could you find some employment for your fork? Mm. Mm. How is the boy? How is he? Uh, he's very well. He spends much of his time outdoors. I... I should like to meet him. Would you mind? Not at all. Say good morning, Paul. Say good morning to your grandfather. Oh. Cézanne found inspiration in the shape of La Montagne Sainte Victoire, just outside Aix. Like him, it thirsted for sun, yet fell back to earth. He said he could occupy himself for months there without moving from the same place, just by turning slightly to the left or the right. He painted the mountain 60 times from different positions on different days. actually drawn a likeness of Cézanne that is too mild. My dear Cézanne doesn't think enough of public opinion. He despises the most elementary things, uh, language, dress, hygiene. <laughs> it's here. It's arrived. But none of this would matter if only he had genius. Why don't you open it? To Cézanne, and his lack of genius. Here. He suffered all the torments of the man condemned to roll a rock uphill forever or to be crushed when it rolls back on him. That's me. It could be anyone. No. I said that. He has written about me. There's an artist and his mistress, who is also his model, and their son. What's wrong with that? He calls the artist a splendid failure. Oh, Paul, it's just a book. How can a man talk sensibly about the art of painting? He doesn't know anything about it. How dare he say that an artist is finished because of one bad picture. Ah! 
I have just received your novel, which you were kind enough to send me. I thank you for it and ask that you let me press your hand in memory of old and better times. Ever yours, your friend from the past. Cezanne and Zola were never to meet again. What Zola did in his novel, which is called The Masterpiece, was to say that Impressionism was a failure. Did you think it was based on Cezanne? Oh, we're all in there, bits and pieces of our lives. The worst thing was, it broke Cezanne's heart. He had married Hortense by that time. He married her not for love, so that Paul wouldn't have to suffer the stigma of having unmarried parents. Six months after the wedding, his father died, leaving Cezanne and, indeed, Hortense, a very generous income. His worries about money, like his feelings for Hortense and his friendship with Zola, were things of the past. You'll have to hurry or the, or the carriage will leave with all your luggage. You will come and stay. Oh. Well, you know I don't like Paris. <laughs> We've got our own bathroom. <laughs> Not that that would interest you. I think that's always been the difference between us. Maybe. Paul. Oh. Now, be good. And if you're not, I've forgiven you already. Go on. I wrote to my old Impressionist friends. We had to lay Zola's masterpiece to rest. We could not allow our names and Manet's memory to be equated with failure forever. Right, there's something that I need to ask you both. He wants us to buy 10 of his paintings for 100 francs. I need 20,000. Francs? And I'm not going to give you anything in return. All that fresh air has gone to his head. I'm thinking of purchasing Manet's Olympia for the state, and I need 20,000 francs. What's in it for you? Sorry, how much? 20,000. Right. So Monet is thinking, this is my chance to go down in history as the true leader of the Impressionist movement. I'm thinking about Madame Manet. I'll think about Madame Manet when and if she asks me to. Well, impressionism will get a boost also. Also, Monet will get a boost. No. Yes. yes. Come on, start me off. What do you say? No. Renoir? No. In the end, Renoir and Degas gave their contributions, and I raised enough money to buy Olympia. In 1907, it was hung in the home of French art, the Louvre. For once, I was closer to home. I'd found some haystacks and started with two canvases, one for grey and one for sunny. Alice, the light's changing. As the light changed on the haystack, the whole subject was transformed. And the light kept changing through the day, through different days. How can anyone say that a landscape even exists when it changes so constantly? You'll have to be quick. And I only worked on each canvas in its light. 
seizing just the right moment at a stroke. The light's fading. Or that moment will be lost. <laughs> you look like a conductor. <laughs> Fifteen pictures of the same thing, and they all sold in three days. <laughs> Something had changed. The world, it seemed, was beginning to see things my way. A haystack. A haystack was as much of a subject as a vase of flowers. And if the finish wasn't smooth, no comment. It was the beginning of what became known as my series paintings. I painted poplar trees along the bank of the river. I went to Rouen to paint the cathedral. I couldn't sleep for nightmares that the cathedral was coming down on top of me. It was blue or pink or yellow. I must have done 30 paintings there. I thought I'd be in Rouen forever. I think I least thought so too. She'd stayed on in Giverny. Our situation really couldn't go on. Our being together and not really being together. And I'll tell you something else that happened. Oshida died. <laughs> I've decided. I'm not going to work away anymore. I know I should wait. And I'm sorry. At last, there are no obstacles in our path. And I don't mean to call Ernest an obstacle. I don't want to distress you. Alice, are you listening to me? Yes, yes. All my life, I have traveled looking for something. I thought that I would find it in seeing different things, but it's here. It's here. <laughs> it's in seeing the same things every day. I shall grow sick of you. Will you? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> 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 We were married in July, 1892, here in Giverny. I'd made enough money to buy the house. Alice loved it here. Oh, I miss her. Early in 1910, she felt very weak. Leukemia. In the spring, there was a remission and I... I you cling to the hope. My dear companion. Died on the 19th of May. Cling to your pallet, they told me. Hardly picked up a brush for three years. Still, Cézanne struggled on alone, the very last of us to be recognized by the world. Morning. Oh, it's a mess. It's too many loose strands and no center. It's escaping. Errant hand. Good day. I have to tell you that I'm extremely busy. 
and will be for the rest of my life. You're not very easy to find. Perhaps I don't want to be found. Every artist wants to be found. What are you working on? It's a painting. Please, don't... Please don't shout at me. Ambroise Vollard. I'm an art dealer. I want to present an exhibition of your work. Can't you think of better ways to waste your money? People should see your work, or you'll die forgotten. I'll organize it all. I noticed your rather spectacular collection of Japanese prints. Oh, I'm a great admirer. Did they inspire you for this garden? Yeah. Oh, I was inspired. There's no point in being inspired if you don't get any help. For the local people, an artist is just a comedian who wore hats. Someone to use. You know they tried to chop down the poplars? And they charged me a toll to cross the fields to paint. Dismantled the haystacks. And when I wanted to make my pond... So what was here before? A marsh. <laughs> Alice! I had been searching the world for what lay at my feet. Alice! I stopped hunting nature and invited her in. I diverted the stream and planted every known variety of water lily in the pond, and they flourished. I set up my easel in front of this body of water that contains in it all the elements of a universe, changing constantly under our very eyes. It's become an obsession. After all his reservations, Cezanne did agree to Vollard holding an exhibition of his work. How many more have you got? 152. 152? I, I, I don't think I can manage them all. What? I mean, at the gallery. Well, you must. I'll think of something. It'll, it'll be splendid. <laughs> That's not quite 152. Well, the big ones are in the other room. How rarely do you come across a true painter? One who knows how to balance tones. Do you have any idea how impossible it is for me to make collectors, even friends of the Impressionists, understand how precious Cezanne's work is? <sighs> so still, so alive. And I want Lestac. Ah, the wild majesty of Lestac. The still life is mine. What? I saw it first. I have my money out first. Still life for Monsieur Degas. <laughs> Painting of him. Irreproachable perfection. <laughs> Must be pleased with what we sold at the exhibition. Oh, lovely safe. Uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I prepared it myself. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you won't fall so long as you stay still. <sighs> I'll be still as a statue. As an apple. As an apple? Please. Do not speak.
just stay still. Well, that's enough for today. You know, you wait. The exhibition. Did Zola come? No. All right. The idiot. If only he had. Now that I'm bowling Paris over with my masterpieces. Forgive me. If only Cezanne had genius, Zola. Many critics thought that Zola's book was about Cezanne, but time will pass and people will understand that Zola's book was just a story. People. Cezanne! I so wanted Cezanne to join us at Giverny that day. I was worried he'd be too shy to come. Me, you celebrate sculptor Auguste Gaudin this year. I wanted him to know he did have admirers and true friends. No, that's my hand. It's my hand. Right. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for shaking my hand. Shall we? Oh, yes. Um... Renoir is celebrating the birth of his second son. Oh. <laughs> it seems that family life is finally suiting him after all these years. <laughs> They've uh, called him Jean. Mm. <laughs> yes, lovely. Many of us here have been following you for years, Cesar. And we know why the younger artists look to you for guidance. Those who were so quick to condemn you will find themselves astonished. A new era of art is opening. Well, this is the promised land, and they certainly won't let me in. Cezanne, you have shown us the future. Bravo. 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 What Cezanne achieved will be appreciated. Not too late for Picasso and Matisse and the others he influenced, but too late for Cezanne. He laid the foundations for a new century, for a new generation of modern painters. He died, oh, must be 15 years ago, wishing, like all of us, that he had more time. Revolutionaries anymore. We're a tradition. Can you believe it? A room of our own at the Great Exhibition. <laughs> if I could have 20 more years to work, I would create things that would endure. At least we're still alive, eh? To the greatest living painter. To myself. <laughs> to myself. To, mm. to Basile. Money. Money. Dugas struggled on into his 80s. He found new passions, sculpture and photography. His work has endured and has become even more popular. Renoir was famous all around the world and fated as a society portraitist, much to his delight. He died last year, December 1919. Took part of my life with him.
It's nearly finished. <laughs> you seem to be getting closer and closer to your subject. Most likely what I'm attempting is beyond my powers. Most likely I shall die without knowing. Monet has outlived them all. Now he is a hero, one of the most successful painters who ever lived, the father of Impressionism. We have his paintings and his garden, the fleeting moments, an impression of life. <laughs> 